we couldn't have done it without being part of MTV. Um, there are some folks, there are some music licensing folks at MTV who are just unbelievable. Um, Paul DeGoyer in particular is, um, uh, you know, is just, just understands the industry really well, has a lot of great relationships and connections to, you know, labels and publishers and, and all that. Um, the way, I don't know if you've heard the story, if you've read the articles, but it started with, um, with Danny Harrison uh, meeting with Van Toffler, who's the, uh, one of the big wigs at MTV, and then talking about, hey, this cool game, um, you know, Guitar Hero, we should totally get the Beatles, um, we should totally make a Beatles Guitar Hero game. And that's when Van said, well, actually, we just bought the company that developed that. Um, <laughs> so that was sort of the first little, you know, spark. Um, it, I think if that conversation hadn't happened, it probably would have been a lot harder. It was really nice to have Danny Harrison, sort of like an insider, um, help you know, proselytize what this might be. Um, another key player in the whole thing was Giles Martin, um, George Martin's son, who had just finished doing the Love Project. Um, you guys heard of that? It's at Circus Soleil is, um, uses that as their music. It's like a mashup of a bunch of people's tunes. Um, so he was already in this mode of kind of new experimental stuff with the Beatles catalog, you know, which up until that point has been pretty much you know, revered it. It's, it's almost like it's a museum piece, right? You just, it's, it is what it is and you don't touch it. Um, uh, but it's, it's been nice to see that, um, you know, the, that Apple Corps and, you know, all the, all the shareholders involved, um, the shareholders are what the, what we call the, you know, Oli uh, Olivia Harrison, um, uh, Yoko, Ringo, and, and Sir Paul. They're the shareholders, they're the ones that represent the Beatles. Um, and they are interested in exploring new ways to, to do something with the catalog. Um, so a lot of things kind of came together, uh, come together. A lot of things, <laughs> came, uh, a lot of the things, uh, a lot of, you know, little individual pieces kind of helped push the thing along. And um, just, our, and that's our reputation too. I mean, when you, when you explain the story of sort of where we've come from and sort of the fact that at Harmonix that it's, it's all about the music, and in fact, we often say that we're musicians first and game developers second, and you can, and that's sort of proven out by our history. I think that really helped sell it. Now that being the case, it's not like it was an easy deal to make. Uh, developing the game um, took less time than getting the deal to happen. Uh, we made the Beatles game in about one year. Um, it was around 20 months uh, to, to get the deal signed. Um, <coughs> It involves more than just uh, the Beatles. There's also EMI and there's um, Sony ATV that holds the publishing rights to the London Department catalog. Does that, does that answer your question? Or? Good story. <laughs> There's the story. Yeah.